the mind yeah. wanders, okay, I'm counting till one till ten. And with my feeble attempts at it, once you remember that, okay, I've wandered, and then you come back to again one to ten. Yeah. But then there is a part of you which feels that, oh, this sinful me, which cannot even focus on one till ten. Yeah. So I think another cautionary note there would be it, that to not focus on that also and to let that go also, that thought of... Yes, yes. So the point is, but the key is to notice that you got distracted by bringing your memory into the moment of your, what your mental state is and then dissociating yourself from that thought train. And then, and then when you... And, and any extra reverberating thought train about how, oh, I'm so terrible, I got distracted. Oh, now I'm being so terrible because I'm thinking I'm so terrible. And then, you know, one after... But those are more, so you keep dissociating from one after another. And as you become, there will be, when you learn to do it at first, you might even think, oh, this is a terrible practice because it's making me more distracted than I ever was. But that's not true. What it is is you're learning how distracted you normally are all the time. So you're not really present in all of the things that you do. And in fact, you're beginning to wake up from the living dead. The person who is unaware of how their mind works is like a living dead person. All the great yogis, Milarepa, they all say that. And, what, and even poets who are not Buddhists, like T.S. Eliot said that. He saw all the people walking across London Bridge looking like zombies. The reason they look like zombies is they're walking on the bridge, but their mind is yesterday, tomorrow. They're just completely not even noticing where they're going. They're not looking at the sky or the river or the bridge or anything or the other people. They're just in the world of their own thinking, stuck there. So mindfulness is beginning to liberate us from the trap of our habitual thinking controlling us. And once we, once we realize how our mind works, when we have an impulse in the mind like, oh, I hate that guy, I'm going to punch him. And then we're helpless, we have to do it because our self is telling us to do it. But when you have mindfulness, you, have, you can step away from that thought and that impulse and you can say, who says I have to do it? Who's talking? So therefore, that, that mindfulness is the beginning of like finding freedom in the mind by bringing the memory. We use the English word mindfulness, but it really is the memory. Jemba means memory. In a way, it means consciousness in the sense of purposive attention. You know, Like when you remember something, it means you're trying to remember, you're being a, having a purposeful attention. So what we mean by mindfulness is, is the purposeful attention. So those are the main four things that so far that we have gotten. Psychology and logic, physics and emptiness, and, um, and karmic biology and ethics. And of course, philosophy is all interconnected there. And Western philosophy, too, is very good. Descartes is very good. And uh, to learn those in connection with the logic is extremely good. So, so this is our job. This is the job. And what I'm saying here is the job of the Board of Education is to figure out, get some geishi types in there, some kembos in there, and get them away from any kind of religious brainwashing, and get them to use the technical you know, empowerment of critical thinking and scientific thinking to discover reality in connection with those subjects that are taught that way in the, edu in the modern educational system, with always with a on the lookout for logta and yandak vitawa. But not, but logta and yanabi tawa. Notice that tawa, it, it, it isn't really belief. It's a view. So it's not a dogma. When we say belief, we think some slogan like God is Allah or Akbar, you know, God is great or Buddha is great. You know, we think it's, it's you, I believe that statement. But no, the view is how you see the world based on your concept about what reality is and your critical thinking about it. And so that. That should be taught in the school, and, th and that's, what, that's why I'm making this program. <laughs> I'm hoping that they will do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, wiser minds than me can do a better job than I can, but at least I can insist that they try to do it. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor. This has truly been an enlightening episode. This is Karma Dendrup. Thank you for watching Analyze and Realize.